Welcome to Murrily End. Uh, my name is Mark Machado. I'm joined by Nick Brooks in South London, Prad Navaratnam in Sri Lanka, and Dominic Machado, my cousin, who's on the other side of the pond in North America. We are days away now from the start of the Cricket World Cup, and we're all absolutely buzzing for it. The boys are in uh, the US getting ready. We'll talk about their warm-up game. But before we do that, just a quick reminder, hit the subscribe button, hit the um, the follow button, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the Murrily End newsletter. Um, it comes out about once a week and we, we're writing about loads of various different aspects of Sri Lankan cricket. If you want to deep dive into the bowling and the batting, then you've got to read what uh, Dom's been writing the last few weeks because it's absolutely incredible. Um, Prad, I'll come to you first because you're the person we've, we haven't heard from most recently. We're days away from the start of the tournament. You're in Colombo. What's the atmosphere like there um, with regards to the cricket? I know it's very wet. And uh, how yep. excited are you? I'm mean, quite excited. Um, it, it just constantly happened to be where I was having been in Colombo at the same time as they launched the World Cup. And um, you can feel the atmosphere building. I think people here feel um, there's something special this time around. Um, so I, I think that there's there's a fair bit more expectation compared to the last couple of years. And, and I think they're really looking forward to that first game come Monday night. Uh, Dom, you're, you're going to that first game. How What's the anticipation like in your Machado household? Oh, everyone's excited. I mean, the thought of having Sri Lanka play in the United States, that is just unbelievable and something uh, I think neither of my parents ever expected when they immigrated about 30 years ago. So we are buzzing. My son goes to his first ever cricket match. I go to my first ever cricket match. Um, and that is that is going to be so, so exciting. I'm cautiously optimistic. I think it's going to be a fun one. I think it's going to go um, down to the wire. And I'm excited to just see this World Cup get off to a start for us. Um, and, and Nick, I've got everyone else's thoughts. Um, me and you are on this, uh, clinging onto this cold, wet rock in the middle of the Atlantic. Um, how are you feeling about, well, you, you've got multiple horses in the race. I mean, you've got the West Indies and potentially a bit of England as well. I've always got my three horses in the race, but I'm super excited for Monday afternoon. I think it says it all. I don't know when England's first game is. I don't know when Wendy's first game is, but I've booked Monday afternoon off work and I can't wait to watch it. Uh, it's a funny one because obviously you've got to come into this game against South Africa with a bit of trepidation looking at how strong their top six is. It's like a bit of an IPL glamour list Uh Plus, with maybe like Ryan Rickleton thrown in, who I was super impressed by in the mm. SA20. But it's one of those games, I like to think of it as a bit of a free hit, where uh, Sri Lanka is probably expected to lose and can lose and still qualify. But if they can win and pull off an upset, it just sets the tournament off on a great, great footing, right? Yeah, yeah. That oh, that'd be incredible if they won that first game. Prad, you've been in this situation with the Sri Lanka side last. Was it the last T20 World Cup that uh, yeah. was happening? Yep. They come so quickly now, I can't remember. Um, what would the atmosphere be like in the camp at this very moment, days away? Also acknowledging yep. the fact that they, I want to say they, I'm going to use the phrase, they kind of lost to the Netherlands because it wasn't a proper 11 on 11. <laughs> and also no, no one's actually seen any footage of it. So we're not actually sure it happened, right? It's it's like yep. that. Uh, it's like India's 83 World Cup win. Um, and a couple of <laughs> things that no, nobody actually saw. So we don't know. It's all gone into cricket myth now. Yeah. So what would the atmosphere be like in the camp at, the, at this moment? Yeah, look, uh, I've done the last two, the one in Dubai and, and in Australia. And I'll tell you what, um, th th I think the atmosphere, there'll be a lot of anticipation amongst the boys. Um, and I think, you know, it's not the last one, but the one before, the, the boys very much knew that was in the first World Cup for a lot of these boys. Um, but I think now they're experienced, you know, they're, they're going mm. in knowing exactly what to expect. And from what I know with these guys, they they they'll be they'll be there'll be a lot of anticipation, ready to ready, raring to go. And, and 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 you know, Nick was mentioning it. You know, it's it's kind of free hit for us. Um, but I, there's something inside me that that that's telling me that I think this is the game that will set Sri Lanka's World Cup. I feel, um, you know, if we come out and happen, I I don't, I don't know how the pitch is going to play in New York. It's a brand new pitch, uh, and I've heard two sides. I've heard it's going to be fast, but I've also heard it's going to be slow and spin. God knows which way it's going to go. <laughs> Because a whole brand new ground, um, but I think if Sri Lanka come out fast and 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 have a good game, which they tend to do historically against South Africa in World Cups, mind you, um, I think we can be in for a great World Cup. 
at the same time, if the ball goes completely the other way, um, I think the pressure will be on, and it's going to be interesting to see how we we turn up after that. Um, Dom, do you have any idea of how this pitch might might play? Because there's a lot there's a lot of people in social media who've decided it's going to do something or another. But <laughs> where where are we get this information from? Because it's a it's a totally brand new pitch. Yeah, we have absolutely no evidence to say that. So just a quick backstory of the pitch. So. The pitch was um, first formed in Adelaide, right, and then shipped over to the United States. It didn't come to New York. It stayed in Florida for a few months because New York in February, March, April is not conducive to growing grass. Um, So it was in uh, Florida. And then a couple weeks ago, they took the pitch and relayed it in New York. So if they relayed it in New York a couple weeks ago, it's reacting. The weather's been pretty warm over there. So we really have no idea. We might get a sense because India and Bangladesh are playing the only warm-up match in New York. So we may get a sense, and that's June 1st, so that'll be this Saturday. So if you want to get a sense of what the pitch looks like, its dimensions, how it's playing, that will be the time we know. But prior to that, I think there's very little evidence that we know anything about this pitch. Uh, Nick, you you mentioned a little bit there about... um south africans and how terrifying they could be i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna go out and live and say i mean class is the the one player that you should probably fear more than most right he's potentially like the full white ball batter in the world but he kind of finished the ipl with a bit of a whimper right and i uh, you know how, how how a shrunk gonna gonna win this nick give me some hope here <laughs> I think if you're looking for hope, Marky, I've got it in the fact that I guess you'd say Decock had a really big last World Cup, but hasn't been a massive force in franchise cricket over the past few years. Markram's returns were middling. Miller, you could say, is maybe past his prime. Stubbs was the one who really announced himself across the IPL. I think he struck at something like 190. Uh, but then after that top six, there's quite a big drop off. I'd imagine they'd play Janssen at seven. And then I don't really know the way they'll go with the rest of the bowling attack, whether they go two spinners, two seamers or three seamers and one spinner, whether it's Shamsi or Maharaj. So I've got no idea really how they line up in terms of their Mm. bowling attack. Uh, But yeah, I think that that's the glimmer of hope is that their batting maybe uh, has isn't quite as daunting as it looks at first glance on paper. And I mean, just a word on the pitches. I think that the consensus seems to be that they're going to be slow and low. But I am kind of wondering, I mean, I know that it's hard making a drop in pitch and you don't have that much control of it. But this is a mass, this tournament's a massive advert for cricket in the USA, right? And I think the general consensus is a better way to advertise the sport is to have loads of sixes being hit rather than 130 plays 130. And so I wonder whether the ICC mandate is like try and make the pitches as mm-hmm. road-like as possible to advertise t20 cricket as being more fun than baseball and so i wouldn't be surprised if these matches in the usa we see some actually some surprisingly good tracks um prad when with with the tracks in mind and also where i think uh south africa might end up stacking it with with pace who who are our boys who who kind of need to to who you think could could really benefit from the kind of uh, bowlers that the South African squad might put out to face them. Yeah, look, if if the pitch does, you know, come on fast and, and it is a batting track, you know, I actually really hope it, w- it will be because it suits the likes of our top order. This is the top order that failed against Netherlands that played on a slow pitch that had Arian Dutt, an off spinner, opening the bowling, mm-hmm. right? But if we're going to be playing against the likes of Jansen and, and, and the South African fast bowlers on a quick pitch, expect... Kusal Mendes to get in the runs. Um, expect Patum Nisanka loves the ball onto the bat. Charita Sulak, another one, loves it. Um, uses his forearm really well. Works it off his legs brilliantly when there's pace. Um, so I think that'll tend to suit our batting a little bit if it is a bit quicker. Um, historically, Sri Lanka have struggled against the spin. So I think if it is a little bit quicker, mm-hmm. and, and like Dom said, you know, we'll know more on Saturday um, after the India Bangladesh game. Um, I think South Africa will stick to their strength regardless. I expect South Africa to play three fast bowlers, whether the ones an all round and two out and out fast bowlers. Um, and that may work in our favour if, you know, our batters come to the party. 
Uh, Dom, what you what you kind of got anything to add there to, to what Prad said about what yeah. Abbas might do? Yeah, I was going to say I'm thinking about the opening game of the 2023 World Cup, which we which is also against South Africa on a fast pitch, on a high scoring pitch, and uh, Chris Almendez had a big big game there, right? He struck a quick fire 76. He hit something like six or eight sixes. So I've heard that the dimensions of these grounds are pretty small. So I actually think, you know, that may benefit Sri Lanka, right? Obviously, South Africa have all the power in the world, but it doesn't matter if you hit it 115 meters if the boundary is only 65, right? And that might help someone like uh, Kusal Mendes, who loves to play the pull and the hook. Um, it may help Patham Nisanka clear, you know, clear the fielders as well. So I agree with Prad that um, if South Africa go with pace, I like our top order against them. I think Kamindu is also a very, very good hitter of pace too. So I think that that's something to look forward to. I think the matchup that they might be wary of, um, Prad brought up Aryan Dutt bowling, opening the bowling for Netherlands. I'm a little bit wary of Keshav Maharaj here. Yep. He is the exact type of bowler that can potentially slow down some of those top order batters. That being said, I think Sri Lanka should go in with an aggressive mindset. Even if they do open the bowling with Maharaj, the, the plan should be go after him, putting put them off their plan, and make them bowl to you rather than bowl at you. Yeah, I, I'm... Um... I just think if we kind of get stuck in, I'm a little bit worried. You brought up the the opening game of 2023. Yeah. I'm also a little bit nervous about the opening, you know, about what happened in the opening game against Namibia uh, in 2022. Mm. Prad, you were there. Can you give us some insight <laughs> yeah, into what actually happened in during that <laughs> game? And, and like, mate, uh, I, yeah, I was there, and, and it was it wasn't. Uh, oh, wait, this is mind you, this is straight after winning the Asia Cup first game. After we've won five in a row, lifted the Asia Cup, beat India, Pakistan, turn up to Australia, and then get put away by Namibia, so it was a bit of a um, bit of a shocker. Um, yeah, look, I think even that game, you know, against Namibia, we, I think, I mean, it's really hard for me to put it down to one thing. I, I think we had a few injuries leading up to the game. If I was, if I remember right, I'm, I've forgotten now. I think with a bowling, I think a couple of our boys were down. Um, and um, we, we, we just, I think we needed, it was, it was typical Sri Lanka in 2021, 2022, where we'd lose the first game of every series and something just kickstarts us and we go on and win the rest of the game. Uh, we did that against Australia in Sri Lanka and then we did that in the Asia Cup. Um, and even in the World Cup, we got the start we needed, then kicked on against Netherlands and UAE, but just couldn't kick on the rest of the World Cup. So with this World Cup, with South Africa, I think, I think it's going to be a little bit more different. The boys, I keep saying this, but I think it actually will mean a lot. The boys are a lot more experienced now um, and they know how to play. You know, they, they're not turning up to these tournaments, not ex not knowing what to expect. They're turning up knowing exactly what to expect. So they played South Africa plenty of times. They played these bowlers plenty of times. They've been in World Cups plenty of times now. So I think um, I, I'm expecting, quietly expecting a, a good game from, from the Sri Lankan team. Um, while we're talking about unexpected losses, I know we've kind of alluded to it. We talked about the Netherlands game, which which they supposedly did lose. Do any of you guys think that's something we should read too much into? You know, what what can what can we tell from that? Proudly talked about that was you know they they opened with spin, which traditionally shrunken batters the the team we have at the moment don't like. Uh, you know, should 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 Shrunken fans be nervous about that loss, or can we kind of write it off as you know it happened? We'll we'll move on from that. Anyone? <laughs> um, I'd be pretty. I feel pretty calm about it. Uh, it was like if you look at the bowling attack, Hasaranga didn't bowl and Pathirana didn't bowl, right? And I would expect those two to be the two guys who are going to be towards the top of the wicket columns in Sri Lanka in terms of yeah, like uh, the natural strike bowlers, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think. The one thing that I said to you guys I was slightly concerned about was the Patham, Kusal and Kamendu, Kamindu combined for 14 of 20. And 
Prad highlighted it last time we spoke, I think, that Sri Lanka have often taken the first couple of overs off mm. and like have been slow to build into that power play. And I mean, I kind of wonder after the IPL we've just seen and the kind of destruction we saw from Head and Abhishek and Narayan and Salt, whether some international sides are going to try and ape that and look to score 70, 80 in the power play. And, uh, you know, you can't do that taking the first two overs off and whether that's somewhere that Sri Lanka could get left behind. I hope not. But I don't think it's, uh, yeah, I don't think the loss is a disaster in and of itself. But I think it does put a bit more pressure on the Ireland game. And that becomes as much of a must win as a warm up can be. Because I don't think you want to go lost to the Netherlands, lost to Ireland, and then have a bad game against South Africa. Because then you're really uh, struggling to build momentum right at the start of the tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll- I was just going to add no Thikshana and no Chimera either. So you're missing a lot of the strike bowlers. I think what uh, the part-timers bowled eight of the 20 overs. So that also is something to to kind of pay attention to. One positive on the bowling side, Dilshan Matashanka took two wickets, including um, it looks like one in the power play, as much as we can reconstruct this game <laughs> from various tweets. Um, I think that's going to be a big point of emphasis here. I think... Nick brought it up with the batting, but I think the power play is where Sri Lanka need to step up both on the bowling and batting side of things. So I think on the bowling side of things, they need to take more wickets so that their spinners can come on in the middle overs and really tighten the screws, right? You don't want to be facing Pathirana when you have to try to kind of um, accelerate. And I think with the batting, that's the question, right? We, We don't want to see Sri Lanka not use that power play because as Prad has told us, Right. They generally take a couple overs to see off the bowling, to see off the swing and then go at it. I think one interesting element, I would say that if you had to choose between Potham and Kusal, which one is going to go um, aggressively? I would say Potham is the better one to go aggressively early because I think um, so I've looked at this. Kusal, once he gets past over four he strikes at 180 to 200. So he's really good. Once he gets in the zone, once he feels out a few balls and he is, and he can hit it, he can help them accelerate. So I would say I would look for Potham, who usually takes the first ball anyway, to be the aggressor early on and put down his sort of foot and show everybody, you know, he's not this guy who strikes at 120 anymore. He's a guy who can strike at 150, 160, 170. So that's kind of my thought is that um, – seeing Potham be aggressive. Mark, I'll ask you the question. If teams start opening with spin, do you think there's a chance Sri Lanka turns to Hasaranga early on as a spin basher? Well, I, I've said for ages, I think they should experiment with him at the top of the order, right? Because my, my only kind of worry is now, like but essentially, I think if Hasaranga plays to his absolute potential in the next six weeks of cricket, then Sri Lanka could have a good chance of becoming world champions, right? Um, because, but that, with that said, I mean, he's captain, he's got to bowl four overs, and we're expecting to score, score runs as well. It's a lot of pressure then for him, which, you know, there's nothing to suggest of any anything we've ever seen in his personality that he wouldn't relish being at the top of the order. But I think also putting him at the top of the order is a lot yeah. of pressure, even though I think I'd be one of the main advocates for it. Um, I don't know, Prad, did you all ever talk about this? Did you all ever discuss it when you were in the... In the well, we, we, no, we did. So I'm going back to 2021 World Cup in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi. Um, not sure if you remember that Ireland game. Mm-hmm. Um, Hasranga scored 77. So... That was a game where, just leading to a World Cup, where we were just really coming up with our own T20 strategy. And Mahalo was, was f- first with the team. And he came up with the idea of let's use Hasaranga back then as a floater. And it was a great idea. Uh, and we said, okay, that game, let's push him up. And the reason we pushed him up was exactly as Dom said, because they were bowling spin. Right? Ireland started bowling spin, so it's slowing us down. We said, let's just send Hasaranga, see what happens. And he went and he went berserk. He just took down the off spinners and, and went, went pretty hard. Uh, the only thing, though, is do we? how far up do you want to use Hasaranga? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, ideally, uh, personally speaking, ideally I'd like to use Hasaranga somewhere in those middle overs after the power play. Yeah. So after over six and anywhere from there, you know. Um, so if, if it's the opener still in by over six, great. You send Hasaranga in at one drop, right? But if we're two, three down in the power play, I still wouldn't send Hasaranga. Mm. Um, because he is susceptible to pace, 
He doesn't like high pace. He doesn't like mm-hmm. bounces at his head. Um, teams are targeting him that way, and, and we knew that. Um, so I, I'm not sure if you noticed, a lot of the times when he's playing against pace, he tends to back away and try to cut it over a third man. Um, and, and teams have worked him out now, and they just put a you know a finer third man and, and just go to bump him at his head. Um, and he just kind of pulls his head away and tries to pull the ball and so he can lose it. Unless he's worked on his game, which is obviously a, a chance, and that can help. But it, it, if it was up to me, I wouldn't set Hasrang in that first six. I would wait till that six over is done and, and then definitely use him to target the spin, especially on small grounds. Um, Nick, what about you? Where are you putting Hasrang? I think, you know... Prad says not not at the top. Me and Dom are pretty for it. What's your t- thoughts? Uh, I kind of agree with Prad. I always thought that like the best time for him to come in is around that eight over mark. Um, and he can be really destructive because also, uh, I mean, I think we saw, I, what was the last series? Bangladesh, it was ages ago, but where bringing him in in those middle overs kind of completely disrupted their plans because they decided to bring yep. seamers on. So then yep. they were kind of short at the back end. So it, he can just manipulate things and he scores in such weird areas as well that like it feels a better fit for when the fielders are out. One thing that's interesting is, I mean, could we maybe see Kamindu go up to the top of the order if there's that worry of the spin? Then you've got a right-left-hand combination yep. which slightly disrupts it and maybe Kuso drops down to three or... Uh, if you're just um, uh, devoted to going hard as Patham and Kusal, you know that like if, if the spinners are tying you down, you try and hit your way out of it. And if you lose a wicket, you've got a left-hander to come in. Um, I don't know. So, uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm not sure that Hasaranga opening is something that we're going to see at least in the early stages. Mm. Uh, but I think this top five, top six looks really well balanced with two left-handers, uh, with Hasaranga as a floater, with... Uh, Patham is more of a kind of accumulator and Kusar as a the really destructive presence at the top. I like the way that top five shapes up. Um, and, I mean, my worry is the last five overs, really, in terms of batting. Can Sri Lanka be a team who can score 70, 80 in those last five when things are going well? Um, can we look beyond South, uh, South Africa and look a bit to kind of Bangladesh, our nearest and dearest rivals. Um, Bangladesh recently lost a series to the US. I think they had a few players missing at various points during that as well. We've played them a lot recently. We've lost high-profile games against them recently. Should we be worried about them, Prad? Or have we got enough to, to contain them? Because if we lose to them and we lose to South Africa, it's kind of game over very early on for us, right? Correct. Yeah, it is. Um, look, I, I, I think, I don't think we would lose them. I'm saying that I'm going to touch some wood. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting, I'm expecting us to get over Bangladesh. I mean, when you compare the form, yes, when we played them, you know, recently, they, they ran us pretty close. I can't remember the actual series result. Um, I think it was some game, the one day series. I think we won the one day and I think we... Drew the T20, if that's right, or yep, something yep. along those lines. We won the, the T20, and yeah, Did, yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, yeah, and so I think, and also, so, I mean, that shows it, right? Their, their recent T20 form isn't great. Yeah. Um, even when they lost against USA, I was actually looking at the scorecard. I think they missed like one or two players. It wasn't many. They had most of their guys playing, like Shakir yeah. played, Lytton played. They, all their main players were playing that game. They still lost, right? Um, so I think I think I'd back us to to overcome Bangladesh. And the other thing is, Bangladesh. I, I, I'm not sure who they're playing in the first game of the World Cup. Who, who do they have before Sri Lanka? I think are they playing? I've got a Nepal block on. I can't. I can't read anything about yeah, them. So yeah, I have to wait for yeah. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, my, my point being is Bangladesh is going to go into their first game under a fair bit of pressure. You know, there's a fair bit of pressure at home for Bangladesh after losing the series against mm. USA to beat an associate nation, right? Now, let's just say they they lose or even run that game close. They they know that game against Sri Lanka is do or die. Because the winner of that game effectively qualifies. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So, there, there's a fair bit of pressure on them. And I, 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 that's, this is why I think Sri Lanka should get over Bangladesh. I was going to say, they, we're, our open, we're their opener. They don't play. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. So, it's going to be a high-pressure game. I want to just yeah. say... I slightly disagree with 
the winner of that game will necessarily get in. Because I think both Nepal and Netherlands are capable of shocking either South sure. Africa or Bangladesh or us. Uh, sure. Those are sure. two, you know, these, those are two very good associate sides. And in 20 overs, um, anything can happen. You know, I think yep. one thing I, I'm thinking of is uh, Nepal has that that really brutal batting attack um, that that kind of scares me. And Netherlands just play smart cricket. So I could see, I really could see how, um, you know, Sri Lanka or uh, that any of those teams could lose to any of those other teams. And I'm wondering yeah. if that is not an advantage for Sri Lanka here where um, I could see South Africa slipping up against Netherlands like they did last time, right? Bangladesh could easily lose to either of those two teams. Um, another another thing I'll add about Bangladesh, I do favor us. I think our batting lineup is stronger than theirs, as is our bowling lineup. Uh, Kusal Mendes loves to bat against Bangladesh in T20s. He is like totally a foreign player against them, and he, he knows and likes their bowling, so I'm hopeful that he'll produce a big innings and, and kind of carry us over there. Uh, Nick, do you know much about the Nepalese team and, and kind of Nepalese cricket and how, how worried we should be about them? Or uh, are you, are you as in the dark of it as I am? I'm pretty in the dark about Nepal. Uh, I know, uh, wasn't Roy Dias their coach for a little bit? They've got a Lankan connection going back in the yeah. day. Uh, I, Apart from that, I don't know a huge amount. Obviously, we've all followed the Lamichane story and uh, he is going to be at the world cup which would seem to be good for no one uh but like i know that they've been they've risen fast and they've got something going on there and i agree with dom i think that through the course of this group there's going to be one upset somewhere yeah. uh yeah uh, i was gonna say prod probably knows more than i do about the, the nepalese team or <laughs> yeah about the nepalese team <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, actually, I'll be I'll be very honest and say I, I don't know much about them. We, we've never came across them, and, and you know, finding you know information about associates teams are already pretty hard. Yeah. Um, because you know we tend to cover a lot of the games that are actually televised um, mm. when when we analyze, and and as you know, most associate games are hardly televised, right? So yeah. we don't get the video, or we don't get the data from that. Besides, what you get on cricket for. So yeah, they've got what hell of a logo. That. I yeah, say, yeah. You see the, the rhino coming out. It, it looks amazing. <laughs> I'll say yeah. the two things I know. So Dependra Singh Airy just broke the world record for fastest 50. He hit a 50 in nine balls. And then he hit six sixes in an over in um, an associate match recently. And then they have, I think, Kushal Mala, who is, he like strikes at 170. In, and he's, I think he bats three or four for them in T20. So there is some power. And I thought, is is Lamashane going to be there? I thought, I thought they denied his visa. Oh, maybe. Yeah, they denied. They definitely denied it recently. Yep. I don't know if there's they any denied the visa. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. that as well. Um, I'm, 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 I'm kind of nervous, right? Because recently. We've done well against associate teams, but you've got that Namibia loss isn't too far away from our minds. We've now just kind of lost the warm-up game to the Netherlands, so we're not really sure how much we can read into that. Um, I think the Dutch side, you know, they've played us now. Admittedly, three of our best bowlers didn't bowl against them, but we're kind of playing them regularly. Most of their players play at decent levels as well. Um, And... You know, we're, we're none like we're not playing on our home pitch. I don't think it's necessarily as clear cut as win one of the first two games as we're through. As we're saying, right, the boys are going to stay professional, got to stay focused, and do the work uh, with the you know with the various back uh, backroom team to be able to make sure that we put ourselves in the best best position to win. Um, I think, chaps, I think we should leave it there for today. Because I think we've kind of dissected everything that, you know, all all the possibilities of the first couple of, uh, first, what, 10 days of Sri Lanka's cricket. Mm-hmm. We'll obviously have reaction shows after every game and previews into them as well. Um, but when we get through to the Super 8, we're going to have to jump back on again and maybe even get Estelle and discuss our plot to the final at that point. But also, I mean, I'm very optimistic, but I'm also slightly nervous now after listening to you all, all tell us. 
thanks for coming on everyone um if you've got this far and you're listening or watching please hit the subscribe button and subscribe to uh the Marillion newsletter we'll be back again soon thanks a lot bye